there we go what's going on guys happy monday hope your day is going great so far um yeah today was kind of crazy but i'm on here i'm on here a little late to 4 15 but i'm here that's what counts <laughs> all right um dude these like these subjects that we're going to be talking about or that we have been talking about and now we're getting more deep into are so interesting and are so good guys all right so on friday we finished uh perseverance of the saints um if you're new here we're do going through essential truths or the christian faith by rc Sproul, and um we are in chapter 71 we're starting chapter 71 right now and this one is so good oh my word anyways this i mean this this author he's with the lord now but he is so talented in being able to in sentences and and in uh in uh, i don't know formation of words to capture like very deep thoughts and um i don't know things that i would have never thought to say or to to you know to think or to jot down or these these very complex i feel like um thoughts and uh i don't know anyways he does such a good job at like really making it plain for us to understand because he can really get up there high up there in his words and his speech but anyways so today we're going to talk about the assurance of salvation and how we can be we should be and we are commanded to by scripture the word of god to know to be assured that we have reached salvation that we are saved through christ jesus and i'm going to go through hopefully I'll be able to finish it look at the time so i'm not like okay um, I'll be able to go through uh, certain situations or certain people or certain um, ways that you may think that you're saved, but biblically, you may not be. This is scary. This is something that like we need to talk about because we are talking about eternity here. We're not talking about, oh, you know, I don't know, something very minor. Oh, I thought that I, I don't know, did some this, this training or something and I did it. Okay, it's fine. I'll just go do it. No, we're talking about, you know, the fact that you can know in this world that you are saved and not wait until you are not in this world anymore to figure out i'm not saved because you know what when you get to a point to figure out you're not it is too late and the uh yeah it's it's very catastrophic and it's very to say the least because um you'll find yourself in a place um of wrath forever so this is i mean this this is not there's no joke there's no joke around here this is like serious stuff um i know i joke around a lot and i'm like very sarcastic but this is uh yeah this is it if you want to get serious about anything in your life is your eternity so anyways um let's start reading uh the assurance of salvation Archie Sproul says can anyone know for sure that he's saved uh for someone to declare that he is certain of his salvation may seem to be an act of unspeakable arrogance. Yet the Bible calls us to make our salvation a matter of certainty. Peter commands in 2 Peter 1.10, Therefore, brothers, be more diligent to make your call and election sure. You know, we were talking about how there are elect, we are predestined, but we need to hold fast to our salvation and know and have assurance. That's what he's saying. Be more diligent to make your call and election sure. Okay? It is our duty to seek assurance of our salvation with diligence. This is not done out of idle or idle, idle curiosity, like, hmm, I just I'm just curious to know if you're saved, if I'm saved. No, it's not, it's not, that's not the reason why. But the state of our soul, okay, to enhance our growth in sanctification. We don't want to know that we're saved. Yes, to know that we have assurance, yes. But to grow in our sanctification, to grow in it. You can't be sanctified um, what God does after we are saved if you don't know that you're saved to begin with. If you don't know that you're being sanctified. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I had a whole video that I did last week, you know, why we should be, why we need the gospel every single day. Um, if you want to check out my YouTube channel, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, keep scrolling down because the video is there. This is one of the reasons why we need the gospel every single day to be assured of our salvation, but to go deeper and to grow in our sanctification, to grow in our faith and who we are. Okay. 
Uh, Christians who remain uncertain about the state of their salvation are subject to all sorts of question, questions that paralyze their walk with Christ. If we don't know that we're saved, all right? There's going to be so many ideas out there. So many, even some that come really, really close, okay? Some people call themselves Christians and their theology and their doctrine is off by just 1%, which is enough to throw you off. Okay, so this is so important for us to know why we believe what we believe. Okay, they stumble in doubt and are vulnerable to the assault of Satan. So we must seek to be assured of our salvation. There are four possible positions with respect to one's assurance of salvation. Okay, if you are a human being in this world, you fall into one of these four positions when it comes to knowing that you are saved. And when I mean saved, mean that your sins have been atoned for, have been forgiven by Jesus Christ, by the sacrifice that he did on that cross. And now we're able to have reconciliation with Almighty God, okay? So if you're human, you are, you fall into one of these four points, okay? Number one, um, position number one, uh, there are people who are unsaved and know that they are unsaved. These people are aware of the enmity they have in their hearts towards God and clearly want nothing to do with Christ as their savior. They are bold to proclaim that they do not that they that they do not need Christ. Such people are often openly hostile to the gospel. I know a few of these atheists um, pretty much and um, I remember hearing one atheist once. He was just so he was talking so bad about God. Um, he was saying that God was very arrogant. He's a narcissist, narcissist, um, and just putting God down so much. And he was a proclaiming atheist. And I heard him like, um, he was having this conversation with somebody next to me. And I was like, for an atheist, he didn't sound like an atheist. He just sounded like he was holding a grudge against God. And he was so angry at him. Because you can't be an atheist. Why are you mad at something that doesn't even exist? So, um, so atheists know this, even in their hearts, they know, because the Bible says that God has put eternity in their hearts and their, in their conscience to know there is a God. So they clearly want nothing to do with God. They know they're not saved, um, and, uh, want nothing to do with Christ. That's position number one. So you're hearing these positions and see where you're at. Okay. This should be a reflecting, uh, point for you. Position two, there are people who are saved, but do not know that they are saved. These people are actually in a state of grace but are uncertain of it. Perhaps they are wrestling with sin in their lives and doubt their salvation because of a troubled conscience. In their in this group are those who have yet who have not yet made certain that they are among the elect. Uh, the elect. I know a few of these, and um, the mere fact that your conscience troubles you as far as sin, um, it is uh, already proved that God is working in your heart. Because unsaved people do don't their conscience do, do not tell them they are sinful and do not are not battling with a sin in that sense uh, again like when it comes to knowing that it's um that it's against what God God you know wants us to as believers as Christians so just that right there is already evidence that God's working in your heart if you are in that in that in position too where you're struggling with a sin you don't think that you're saved but you are because God is already working that's the the, the only explanation is the Holy Spirit's working in your heart. And there are people like that, um, maybe not necessarily in churches, maybe people who are just such new believers that they have yet to know that, hey, since you are feeling that way, that's definitely the Holy Spirit and you are definitely saved, okay? That's position number two. Position number three, there are people who are saved and know they are saved. This is a group who are certain of their election and calling. They have a clear and sound understanding of what salvation requires and know that they have met the requirements. They have believed the testimony of the Holy Spirit when he witnessed to their spirits and they are the children of God. Okay, that's Romans 8, 16. Um, and that's honestly, that's where I'm at. I know I'm saved because I see the work of God in my life. Um, and later you're going to see why. Okay, so that's position number three. Uh, we still have to grow in our salvation. We still have to, like I said, preach the gospel to ourselves every day to grow in our sanctification. Position number four is very scary. Position number four, and this is what you guys should be eyeing out to make sure you are not in this position right here. Okay, me reading this, I was like, I know so many people like this. The majority, and I'm very, I'm very careful in how I'm going to say this, 
but it is true and that is one of my convictions um at least it has, has come into my mind or in, i have been enlightened the last couple of years the majority of christians in the united states is really hard to, to say and to hear but i am convicted i am almost certain that the majority of the christians in the united states are in this position hear me out position four there are people who are not saved but convinced or yeah but convinced that they are saved so you people that are not and they think that they are okay these people have assurance of salvation without salvation they are assured their assurance is a false assurance that's scary because this is not like oh i think i was in that flight oh no i'm not this is i think i'm saved and you're going to get to the end of your life and face God as judge and he's going to say no you're not. That's scary, especially when we're talking about eternity right here, okay? Because it is possible to have a false assurance of salvation. How do we know if we are in group 3 or 4? How do we know? How do we know if we think that because of group position 3 and 4, remember they think that they're saved, right? So how do we know which group we're in? Because each one is literally uh a huge deal, you know? One you think you're saved and you are saved. And one you think you in the other position is you think you're saved, but you're not. It is a life or death situation here. So how do we know that? How do I know that my I am my of my insurance assurance of faith? To answer that, we must look more closely at a group at group four, okay? And ask, how is it possible to have a false sense of assurance? How is it? How is it that you think that you're saved, but you're not? The easiest way is to have a false assurance of salvation. Sorry, the easiest way to have a false assurance of salvation is to have a false doctrine of salvation. For example, if a person holds to a universalist view of salvation, he or she may reason as follows. So again, we have to look at if you think you are saved, what is your definition of being saved? Why, what do you think salvation is? That's where you have to start to figure out if you really, really are saved, if you think you're saved. You know, what is your doctrine of salvation? Because right there, you can boil it down to knowing if you are or you're not, okay? So universalists uh, believe this. They believe every person is saved in the world. I'm a person, therefore I'm saved. There's people who really do think this way, even in churches, that believe, you know, everybody's a child of God. Not everybody's a child of God. We see that in scripture. And not everybody is going to be saved. We see that in scripture. Okay? So not everybody will be. Um, not everybody will be saved. Because the person's doctrine is faulty, he or she assures has no firm basis. Sorry. Because a person's doctrine is faulty, he, his or her assurance has no firm basis. Okay? Um, so you need to figure out if you're going if if you're going on the right flight. Is this the flight that I'm signed up for? What where am I going? You see what I'm saying? Like find out what your doctrine of salvation is. Another way that people falsely assure themselves of salvation is by believing that they will get to heaven by trying to live a good life. If you think you're going to heaven by living a good life, that's wrong right there. Again, heaven is where God lives. It's his it's his, not his house. Uh, but it's his place, his paradise. We can't go there if we don't know God. So we need to know what his standards are for going to his house, to his place, right? If you're going to come to my house, I need to know you. I'm not going to let a stranger in my house. And God's rules are way, obviously, stricter than that because he is holy. And he has guidelines um, and what you have to do, what must you be to go into heaven. So read it. It's in scripture. It's the Bible. Your life and your eternity, it relies on it. So this should not be, oh, we'll just wait and see. No, pick up the Bible, read. What, do, what is it? What is it that I have to do? Am I missing the mark? Because my eternity is at stake, okay? So plainfully, the Bible does not preach that if you live a good life, you will get to heaven. Uh, wrong. Not, so many people, even Christians in the church, think they're going to heaven and they're assured of their salvation because they will live a good life. That is that is false. That is not how we get to heaven. Those who think they are living a good enough life to satisfy the demands of a holy God are only diluting themselves into thinking they are saved. God is a holy God. Living a good enough life is not good enough. We need perfection. He, he wants perfection. And since we cannot be perfect, right? That is why we rely on Jesus Christ. 
That is why the atonement that he did, the life that he lived is imputed on us because he lived a perfect life. So now when we accept him as Lord and Savior, God, when he sees us, he doesn't see us. He sees Jesus. And boom, the, that has been set, like the, the requirements have been met. So now we can get to heaven. So again, it's not living a good enough life. Okay. But what if a person has a sound doctrine of salvation? Is it possible to have false assurance? And we must answer yes. What if someone has the good doctrine of salvation and knows it's not by their own, their own works, but only through Jesus? Yes, he's saying here you can still have a false assurance of salvation. A person might think he has saving faith, but not really possess it. You may know what it is. You may say, okay, I know to get to heaven, you need to have Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You, must, you might know it. The Satan knows it, right? And he's not saved. So it's not just knowing it. It's even taking that next step. Um, the test of authentic assurance is twofold. On one hand, we must examine our hearts to see if we have true faith in Christ. Look into your heart. What are your motives to doing that? Are your motives for accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior to go to heaven only? That should not be the motive. The motive um, should be to, to know Christ that you are in love with him, all right? That he is your real Lord and Savior. And get going to heaven and being saved or going to heaven is one of the perks because we, have a, we, have a, uh, we are able to have accessibility to God, holy, perfect God, and to Jesus. That right there is where the money is. That is where we need to be. That's where our heart needs to be, okay? So we must see whether or not we have a genuine love for the biblical Christ. Not the Christ that we think we love. Not the Christ that we, that, that, how do you say it, um, goes with our life, that blends beautifully with our life. No. We need to open up scripture, read the Bible, and get to know the real God that we have to, um, how do you say it, we need to uh, change or mold our lives to Him. The biblical Christ is the one that we need to be falling in love with and to and to want to follow, not just the idea of what we think God is or what Christ is. So we must be who have a genuine love for the biblical Christ. For we know such love for him will be impossible without regeneration. If we check our hearts and we are genuinely in love with the biblical Christ, that can't happen unless we are regenerated. So we know that we are saved. We know that God was the one who did that work in our hearts. Hence, why we love Christ. Second, remember we said it was twofold. We must examine the fruits of our faith. We talked about this, faith and works. Remember that it's not faith plus works that gives you salvation. No, faith gives you salvation, but you need works to, um, to, ex to, uh, to show that you really do have saving faith, okay? We do not need perfect fruit to have assurance, but there must be some evidence of the fruit of obedience for our profession of faith to be credible. If no fruit is present, then no faith is present, right? We can't say, I can't say that I have a mango tree if the tree does not produce any mangoes. If the, produces, if the fruit does not produce any mangoes, guess what? It's not a mango tree. So we cannot say we have saving faith if we do not have any works. Where saving faith is found, fruit of the faith is also found. Finally, we seek our assurance from the word of God through which the Holy Spirit bears witness to our spirit that we are his children. When we read scripture and we see the Holy Spirit guiding us through it, truths into our heart, into our minds, um, that right there is proof in our hearts, right? It's assurance in our hearts that we are his children. If he's talking to us and we are hearing his voice through the Holy Spirit, right there, God only speaks to his children. That right there is enough for us to assure that we are his children. All right, guys, so that is it. I went a little overboard, I'm sorry. Um, let's go through the summary statements and I'll go through the biblical passages to reflect on. Uh, number one, it is our duty to diligently pursue assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation enhances our sanctification. We are more solid in our faith. Our faith grows when we understand what we were saved from. When we understand the gospel, we understand that we are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. There are four possible groups or positions regarding assurance. We need to figure out which, where are we at in those four positions. Number one, those are, uh, though the position number one, uh, these people are who are unsaved and know they're unsaved. Position number two, those who are saved but don't have assurance that they're saved. Four, I mean three, those who are saved and know that they are saved. 
four, very scary. Those are who are unsaved, but believe that they are saved. Uh, number four, false assurance is primarily based on false doctrine of salvation. Five, to gain assur authentic assurance, we must search our own hearts and examine the fruit of our faith. Six, full assurance comes from the word of God, coupled with the testimony of the Holy Spirit. All right, let me show you the passages to reflect on. Over here we have Matthew 7, 21 to 23, John 3, 1 through 21, Romans 8, 15, 17. 2 Corinthians 1, 12, 1 John 2, 3 to 6, and 1 John 5 through 13. And I do that so you guys can take a little screenshot and read it at home. All right, guys. Yeah, think about that. What position are you in? <laughs> that is my question. Um, that right there is the question for today. So think about that. It is a life or death um, decision that you need to make for yourself. All right. Love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.